In Britain, the morning sunlight rests on no village fairer than that of Quorn, once called Quernden by the Saxons, later the home of the famous Quorn Hounds, the capital of Leicestershire hunting country. Now the village's ideal spot on the edge of the Charmwood Forest forms the gateway to a diversity of scenery excelled by few districts in any English county. The forest, they call it here, with Quorn at the top of the county shaped like the beating heart of England, and within its high street and narrow winding lanes, traders and typists, merchants and clerks rally to the shops and factories, where today's business is gathered. Quorn was already served by a station some 50 years before its namesake came along, but along came the Great Central and built a new line so that Quorn could reach out into a new age to take the railways into its lap. It must have been quite a sight when the first trains came rumbling through. That was back in 1898 or thereabouts. Now, Quorn's rather well served for transport, with a modest station that any station master be proud of. And that's where I come in. Each morning, I'm met by what some folks would say is the same task. Eyebound routine, they'd call it. Well, some of it may be, although there's more to railways than routine if you care to look for it. Most of this stuff comes from region, that is, area headquarters. There's often a batch of extra horse boxes required for the corn hunt at the weekend. But at least the passes have arrived. I never spend more time in the house than I can help, and as soon as I've dealt with urgent matters, I'm off on a tour of inspection. I don't get far without somebody chasing me with a message of some sort, and I always reckon to show interest. If I can make the smallest job seem as important as taking a train a couple of hundred miles, then I'm not doing too badly. Ah, here comes the 937 Nottingham. Not many folks about yet to warm the platforms up, and things seem to be going all right, so I've time for my call into the signal box. Since 1928, Quorn has come under Leicester control, and the signalman acts as their eyes on the ground for the mile or so of track under his control. On his panel, the signalman can tell exactly where trains are in his section, and it can set a path by pulling those levers and operating those instruments on his block shelf. That's the 11.7 coming in now. As the train's wheels come into each section, they make those big bulbs light up to show exactly where she is. Uh, excuse me, what station is this? This is Quorn. We keep a record of delays, and whether it's a piece of coal in the point or an elephant on the line, down it goes in this occurrence book. And for those who can read between the lines railway fashion, it's a chronicle of all the life and activity at this place. Okay. She should be ready for departure. Ah yes, he's pulling off for it now. There 
there she goes, right across the point work, making her way to the north, signalling her progress as she moves. Morning rush is just beginning to tail off now, but the day's work isn't just moving trains in and out the station. Down in the yard, for instance, wagons are being shuffled and dealt out again. Just time to tidy up before the place fills up again. Or there's always work to keep us busy, trains or no trains. There's goods, for instance. That comes in these mechanical horses now, not that they're as good for gardens as the old kind, but they bring another trailer load. There's Ellis's coal merchants in the yard too, and once the coal comes in by rail, it is loaded into sacks, weighed and taken off into the village by road. The railways have to be ready to accept everything that's sent to them, and from here, as well as receiving it, goods get sorted out and loaded onto trains to be sent to places all over the country. From pigeons to perishables, we've got to be ready for anything, and this gets picked up as and when required, anything up to twice daily. Every time a train comes in, it means a complicated operation. To get it away on time, each man must know his job and get on with it without being told. On this station, there will be several people with a particular job to do before the trains away. There's the booking clerk selling tickets. There are the porters getting parcels over into the goods yard, while the fireman seeing to his fire and topping the boiler up with water. There's the guard, the signalman setting the path and signals for the journey ahead and that's to name just a few, but in less than a couple of minutes the train must have its load and be ready for off again. Right away! Away from Quorn, the trains travel the old Great Central route, but it's not just the village of Quorn our station serves. For out in the forest, people have been visiting the beauty spots of Woodhouse Eaves for as long as anybody can remember. Once people had to walk an extra mile to get there, but since the arrival of the railway, something more direct has come to save the legs of weary travellers. For the Charmed Forest now is still as popular with tourists as it was when the railway first opened, from the days whereby the village refreshment room struggled to keep up with demand. Now Windmill Hill and Beacon Hill are much closer, and the more hardy visitors can still take to Bradgate Park, the former home of Lady Jane Grey, the Nine Day Queen. Each public holiday, all Leicester pays flying visits all to enjoy the county's many beauty spots. Much of Charmwood has lost its forest character, but has retained its natural beauty, being described once as being rich in scenery, beyond the dreams of average.
At Quorn Station, besides all the goods traffic, the afternoon always brings another rush of people. Some from the forest aiming to be in Manchester by 6.30, or perhaps businessmen from Chaveney Road who will be in Marlebone <laughs> before 9 o'clock. And every day, something different happens on these platforms. Whether it's helping individuals or fixing up poster boards, it's a human job of work. And there's always time to make the place look nice too. Over in the booking office, they're sorting out the day's returns. And there's another batch of human give and take. Sort through that lot and you'll find a collection of real stories as varied as their destinations. They're not just selling tickets in this place. They're selling journeys to folk who are off to find a new job, or getting married, or joining their families, or leaving them. This chap can check tickets till he's blue in the face, and he better check them right too or the passenger agent will be after him. But there's something that travels through each day that you can't put a price on. In this job, I suppose we all start by serving railways. But if we've any sense, we come to realise that our transport job begins and ends by serving people. Hello, British Railways Corn. Since 1899, Quorn and Woodhouse has moved people to and from their places of business. Traders and typists, merchants and clerks, and tourists. For it was this part of the country that the Great Central brought in royalty. There was the future King Edward VIII, for instance, who used to change in the booking office ready to join the train home from a day with the Quorn Hunt, and royal guests to join the lavish parties at Bow Manor Hall. Jack Hilton, too. For it is to this spot that the railway has brought in people, and this tradition stretches back a long way, back to those who ruled in the old Great Central days, and to the former station masters, to Herbert Washington France, William Yule and Harold Doughty, the latter who welcomed thousands of evacuees from Sheffield and the South to the station to escape Nazi bombs. The tradition stretches right back to where, on this site, lay just Mr Farnham's brickyard. Mr Farnham, you're a member of Leicestershire County Council and you also have a business here at Quorn. What effect are the railway proposals going to have on the people in this area? Well, I think it's going to have quite a serious adverse effect. Well, I don't think much of it, really. We shall miss the trains if they do close. Mm -hmm. Is it going to inconvenience you very much? Yes, a great deal. I do all my shopping in Nottingham. I go by train, I go to Leicester quite a bit. Oh, I think it's rather a poor show. And now I finish for the day, but there'll be no break for my leaving, for it'll not be long before trains are clanking and racing through corn once more. When I was at school, I recall they used to tell us that if you give a thing a shove and then leave off, the thing will still keep on going. Well, when I've given Corn and Woodhouse my shove for the day, I reckon my chaps will keep things going all right till next time, so I can shove off myself. Aye. That's it.